Hey everyone, uh, day two on the Ninth Amendment. Today what we're going to take a look at are some of the cases that have grown out of Roe v. Wade, uh, specifically Planned Parenthood v. Casey, and this concept known as an undue burden. So if you take a look at that second objective or outcome, which is your focus for today, I want you guys to decide when it is constitutionally permissible to place restrictions on abortions. And as you can see on that second activity, you're going to do a scenario analysis activity for this. So this is where, uh, much like our Fifth Amendment cases, our Fourth Amendment cases, in a perfect world, you're doing this with a partner, if not a group or your committee, so that you can read through these scenarios, uh, take time to discuss them in relation to the decision of Roe uh, and some of the ideas from Griswold as well to see where you stand on these. So I'm going to skip ahead. I'm going to go right to page, excuse me, slide 84 here, just to introduce this concept of an undue burden. Now, this stems back to what I was explaining yesterday about the culture war that's really grown out of the Roe v. Wade decision. And immediately, uh, the dividing lines on this issue were around the topic of whether or not uh, <clears throat> there's such thing as fetal rights and whether or not that supersedes the rights of the woman. And for a long time, a couple of decades, uh, right off the bat, those that were uh, pro-life really fought uh, to get some sort of constitutional amendment that would supersede the decision in Roe. Uh, but what they found out was never really going to be realistic. So they really changed their strategy. And what they wanted to start to do was push states to pass laws to try and limit access to an abortion, really in an attempt to eventually undermine the decision in Roe uh, to try and limit uh, women's access to abortion as much as possible. And this has really been the big fight over the last couple decades uh, since the landmark case, Planned Parenthood v. Casey, uh, <clears throat> which I'll explain momentarily. So when we're talking about this point on undue burden, what we're looking at is whether or not there can be restrictions placed on a woman's access to gain an abortion in the name of women's health or the health and safety of the child. So what we're really looking at is whether or not there's that governmental interest uh, in these cases to be able to place reasonable, uh, depending how you interpret that word, uh, restrictions on abortion. But again, this really comes back to that culture war we have because those that are pro-choice really see these uh, laws that have been passed by states as a real way to uh, keep women from gaining access. Whereas again, uh, those that are pro-choice, though that has been their intent, they're also going to argue that this is something that is really important to protect the health of women. So here's where I'm going to ask you guys to watch two videos. I'm not totally sure how uh, the playback occurred. Uh, when I showed the videos directly on here. So I'm gonna ask you to pause the video and watch both of these that you have. You can see you have one right here, which is gonna touch on that topic of whole women's health v. Uh, Hellerstead, which is a really important case not too long ago dealing with this issue. In fact, uh, the case basically from Hellerstead is back up in the docket of the Supreme Court again. So we're looking at this issue one more time, I think with the state of Louisiana, but you can fact check that. And then two, uh, this video right here from CBS This Morning uh, really grew out of a number of the fetal heartbeat bills that were passed uh, following the nomination um, and acceptance of Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. Now, I'm sure you've heard in the news a lot, there's these great fears that abortion will be undermined uh, or might be outright uh, taken away. Uh, have that decision a row overturn. That's something that people have been talking about for decades and it's still yet to happen. Uh, so this is a kind of regular thing that you hear. Um, but because of advancements in technology, because of the fact that this culture war over abortion has been going on for over 40 years, and because of how polarized we are, especially with that ideological split on the courts, uh, experts are saying that within the next five to seven years, you can really see a lot of uh, <clears throat> the rights that women have gained to access to an abortion really be taken away by laws like these. So watch each one of them and really give thought to whether or not 
what you hear in here uh, or in these videos in some sort of manner really takes away uh, the rights of women? Or do you think this is something that is necessary for health? So again, stop it now, play that. And then when you are finished, you want to move on to slide 85. And that's what I am going to do right now. So I'm going to give you three scenarios. Uh, you'll be able to access these readings via uh, Canvas, just like I posted the Ninth Amendment scenarios readings the day before. So we're looking at three cases. One, Planned Parenthood v. Casey, this landmark case that did state that women can have, um, <clears throat> or excuse me, that states can pass laws that will place some restrictions or limitations on an abortion, women's right to gain one, as long as it doesn't cause an undue burden. So realize this is a case that that concept of an undue burden grew out of. So when you're reading the short blurb on this, you want to really assess each aspect that's in the law to decide whether or not you think that would place an undue burden. The second case is on uh, Whole Women's Health v. Hellerstead, which again was that first video right here on slide 84. You're gonna get a little blurb on that. And again, you wanna ask whether or not you believe that an undue burden was placed on women. And then the final one is going to be this thing called the heartbeat bill, which again goes back to this video right here on slide 84. You're gonna read a little blurb from NPR to decide if you think that these types of bills violate the guarantees made in Rome. So to what you see on the board here, uh, or excuse me, the slide, more or less I'm gonna repeat myself, but the guiding question for all of these is when is it constitutionally permissible to place restrictions on a woman's right to abortion? So you gotta consider the court's intent in Rome. Now realize that this decision uh, was criticized by people on both the left and the right. Now that's separate from uh, whether or not women should have access to an abortion, but the way the court came to it. So think about what I talked about yesterday, some of the notes you had, or go back to what we see here on slide 83, and really think about the ideas that are embedded in these statements and <clears throat> when a law could potentially infringe upon some of the ideas that are housed in here. So secondly, consider your own ideology. This is one of those things that uh, two people can be true at the same time when talking about this issue because it's so nuanced, so complex. So bring your own thought process into this as well. So for the activity, really simple. Uh, I'm going to look for you to read the facts of the case and then based on the facts, decide if an undue burden was created. So here's where you're working in your notes, uh, labeling each topic, laying out some of the key facts, getting down some of your thoughts. Again, hopefully you're working on this with a partner uh, or in a small group so you guys can go back and forth on this. And then on Canvas, what I'm going to ask you to do is take a stance on each case. And just give me a couple sentences of reasoning for your decision. Why is it uh, that you think this would put a undue burden or that would put an undue burden? Why or why not? Just some basic ideas like that. And then afterwards, I'm going to explain this to you and you will do or each one of these topics to you a little bit and then you'll do an exit ticket on this. So I'm going to sign off here and you can begin working on that activity.